My name is Angela Wei. I'm a 10th grader at ISPP. I'm Chinese American, and I came to Cambodia about three years ago. One fact that not many people know about me is that I teach robotics at ISPP, and a few years ago, I was a robotics world champion. That's me from the pink arrow. Um, that's me with my team. We're at the 2014 VEX IQ Middle School World Championship, and we look obviously very ecstatic. We spent hours and hours, weeks upon weeks, months upon months in, in preparation for this competition. And to come out with the biggest award was more than we could ever dream of. It's safe to say that this experience was a life changing for me and still probably my happiest moment to this day. I've been doing robotics for about five years now. And robotics has changed my life in so many positive ways that I can't begin to even explain. And I believe that robotics has the power to change other people's lives as well. And that's why I'm giving you this TED Talk, to explain why robotics and hands-on STEM education is so vital for us here in Cambodia. So a bit of backstory on me. In ISVP, I teach fourth to sixth graders robotics every Tuesday. Sometimes we code, sometimes we program, or sometimes we just watch stupid robotics videos. But whatever it is, the kids have full creative control. They can do whatever they want. And even though I enjoyed my time competing, there's a thrill I get from teaching that I don't elsewhere. It's inspiring to see these kids just a few months ago when they came in nervous and worried and unsure about everything, now they walk into my class, they look me in the eye, and they said, today, I want to build a robot that can beat up other robots every single day. And to see that kind of confidence inspires me, because like them, when I first started, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. A bit more backstory on me, I lived my entire life in Northern Virginia in the United States, right there. I grew up playing with Legos. I love Pokemon, and like all older siblings, I swore that my younger sibling was the most annoying demon in the world. It's her right there. <laughs> this all changed in fifth grade when I did my first robotics competition, the 2013 First Lego League Nature Theory. When I first joined, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was unsure what it meant to do robotics. I just thought you were going to build a robot, and then it would walk. But instead, what we did in Nature's Fury was Oh, by the way, this is what I thought it was going to look like. Um, some old guy behind a dark room typing away at a computer. Sadly, it's not true. Instead, what we did was we interviewed countless professionals about natural disasters. We created newsletters. We made gigantic poster boards. And most of all, we worked so hard on developing our teamwork. We also ended up writing a book on natural disasters. And for my next few robotics competitions, made more books, as you can see over there, illustrated by me in sixth grade. <laughs> This all changed when I moved to Cambodia. In Cambodia, there was no robotics. And for me, since I grew up in the United States my entire life, I went to the same school. I had the same friends since I was, in, when, since I was six. It was completely, um, completely devastating to hear that I had to move to a new country with a language I didn't understand, to a city I've never been to, and go to a new school and make new friends. But there was one thing that made this entire moving process much easier on me. And that was, surprisingly, school. You see, all the time that I spent building and reprogramming my robot ended up transferring into my everyday school life. All the time I spent prepping interview questions and writing up research reports ended up transferring my research skills into my history classes, into my art classes, and into my PE classes as well. These are the eight approaches to learning. And we use them at ISPP as kind of a framework for how kids learn. And as you can see, there's many different skills on here, such as critical thinking, collaboration, and organization. Even though I was new to ISPP, because I did robotics for so many years, all of these skills came natural to me. And it made my first year at ISPP so much easier than if I didn't do robotics. So switching gears a bit. I think we can all agree that STEM fields are credibly becoming very popular nowadays, with many th jobs opening up in these sectors around the world. And we can even see that in TEDx, with so many of the talks today being about technology, about scientific advances. But for the rest of Cambodia, this isn't a popular trend. According to the Phnom Penh Post, in 2016, only 20% of all Cambodian college graduates graduated in STEM, compared to 40% worldwide. And only um, in all 15-year-olds in Cambodia, the majority of them thought that math and science were their least favorite subjects. So why? Why is Cambodia so uninterested in STEM? 
After researching this and talking to multiple teachers and reading countless reports, I came up with two big reasons. But I'm not going to tell you them because I want you to talk about it with someone else for a few seconds. What do you think these two reasons could be? Go. All right, good. Does anyone have an idea? Yeah? Winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Anyone have any idea what the second one could be? That's OK. <laughs> it's, this one might be more um, something that you weren't expecting, which is the belief that STEM isn't a profitable subject. So let's go to problem number one first, the quality of education. As we all know, the quality of education in many Cambo Cambodian public schools aren't that great. And it's true that the curriculum needs to be strengthened, and our teachers need to be taught more. But like the Minister of Education has said, it's not that we need to make it better. We need to make science and STEM more interesting and more exciting. He says that STEM education needs to be strengthened. We must train teachers in mathematics, science, and laboratory skills, and make the teaching more exciting. We need to make STEM more engaging, more interactive, more fun for the students, instead of it just being sitting in front of a table the entire day and memorizing math formulas. For the second reason, I'm going to need some of your help. So can you please raise your hand if you can speak English? Whoa, that's so many of you. <laughs> All right, keep your hand up if English was not your first language, but your second language, or your third language, or your fourth language. All right, now keep your hand up if you believe that English is better or um, on par with your mother tongue now. Right, put your hands down. So um, I'm going to put a statement up on the board. And if you've seen this before or heard this before, had someone say this to you, raise your hand up. Learning to speak English is the most important skill to secure a better future in Cambodia. If you've seen this, heard this before, raise your hand. Right, a good amount of you have. And sadly, that's the truth. Many parents and educators and adults in Cambodia today don't believe that STEM is profitable. They think that what gets people to success is English and learning business, going to banking and accounting, that gives them a secure future for the rest of their lives. They don't think that science and math are reliable and they won't pay well. So what can we do? This is a big question, the disinterest in STEM. It's not solvable by any single one of us individually. But there are a few things that our school systems could do. The first is introducing um, flipped classrooms. So some of you might know this, but flipped classrooms is basically where instead of you going to the teacher for lectures, you listen to the class and the lecture at home, and then in school you do activities there. This helps you develop what you learned in class and apply it in real time activities, such as doing a lab experiment or even writing a research report. The second one is more straightforward, which is simply to do more hands-on experimentation. In science, this means lab reports, but in math, this could also mean going outside and taking photographs of parabolic shapes. It could mean in engineering where you go out and interview real engineers. And the third one, which is what I've been promoting, is robotics. It's an easy way for kids to develop their math and science skills without them knowing that they're passively learning these skills all at once. These um, hands-on education is very important for us because it's engaging, it's hands-on, and most of all, it's practical. All the skills you learn in your science subjects could then be transferred to any subject, whether it be history or math or art or music. It develops your teamwork skills, and it develops your problem-solving skills and your ability to tackle real-life problems in the world. There's already, been do there's already so much good work being done that we've seen in TED TEDx today. So many kids are now becoming more interested in technology and innovation and coding and science, and it's so amazing to see that. But that doesn't mean that you can slack off, too. There's something that here everyone can do. If you're a parent, just simply go online and search up some apps. You'll see there are tons of apps that teach kids how to code, do math or science in a fun, engaging way. If you're a teacher, all of these um, strategies that I presented in the previous slide are easily doable at no cost and don't require um, any time or energy at all. If you're a student and you think that maybe math isn't your best subject or science just isn't for you, remember my annoying younger sister? That's her right there. <laughs> And she also thought that math was not something that she was very strong at. She's in my robotics class, and she didn't believe that she was going to do very well. But unbeknownst to her, there was going to be a video played of her robot working and following a black line. There we go. So her and all of the kids in her class were able to make this robot follow 
a line to follow a black line in less than an hour. Can we play it? All in an hour. Woo. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. If my sister could do it, there's no reason why you can't do it too. So what does this all mean for us? There's no doubt in my mind that Cambodia is going to need more scientists, more um, programmers, more coders, more engineers. But that doesn't mean that we need to force our kids to become those. By learning, giving them hands-on STEM education, it gives them the opportunity to practice becoming a scientist or an inventor, but it also gives them the skills that they can use in every other subject. By teaching hands-on STEM education, we are prepping our kids to become the leaders for our future, the leaders for our hopeful future. Thank you very much. And if you want to learn more about LEGO Robotics, tomorrow at Aeon, I'm hosting a robotics masterclass. If you're interested in the program as a whole, please just drop in and say hi and ask any questions. It's really no cost. It's at Advanced Learning Academy at Aeon Mall. It's from 3 to 5. Thank you. So that was our last speaker. And to, and my name is Ju Young, and I am another senior TEDx ICP organizer. And this was my third time organizing TEDx ICP. And compared to the last two years TEDx ICP, today we had the best audience and we had the best speakers. And we, I really want to say thank you to our audiences who have listened to the four hours of nonstop talk show and who have understand and supported our beautiful speakers. And next, I really want to say thank you to our organizers, especially uh, Junior, who have organized the TEDx ICP until now for three years, and the Miss Ud, who have started the TEDx ICP and who have supported and gave us a helpful feedback during the event. And lastly, I really want to say thank you to, to our 17 speakers who have shared the ideas and who have created a hopeful future for us in today, during today's TEDx ICP. So can everyone give another round of applause for our speakers? So officially, we are done with our TEDx ISVP 2017 this year, creating whole field future. And thank you for everyone. And hope, I hope to see you during the next year TEDx ISVP also. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, uh, we are selling the TEDx ISVP teachers. It's only $12. So just buy and support our next year TEDx ISVP earlier. Thank you.